Hello there, my friends. Hello there, my friends. Hello there, my friends. Welcome back to another brand spanking episode of the Agostino Zynga Show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga. And this is episode number 784. That is 784 siete ocho You see, my Espanol is muy bien, just like Jude Bellingham. Thank you for tuning in. Another episode of the Agostino Zynga Show with I, your lovely and gracious host, the friend you wish you never had, and everything else in between. How you doing? how you're feeling oh great good to know good to bloody know as for myself i'm doing fairly fine i'm well hydrated well rested i should have been running yesterday but i didn't i took the day off so i'm gonna run actually later on today when i finish doing all my flipping necessary pods i've got a jam-packed day today doing taz and obviously gonna do a random show after the fact if you're listening to this podcast after the fact you have no idea what i'm talking about but i'm still letting you guys know how hard i'm working and what i'm doing because that's the only semblance of joy and satisfaction i get out of my life my work doesn't give me satisfaction my life doesn't give me satisfaction my friends my family don't give satisfaction the only satisfaction that i get is from knowing that i'm doing more than anybody else out there for little to no reward how great is it to be me how great is it to be me i think it's something that i've kind of come to grips so with over the years i've begun to kind of realize i've begun to really kind of internalize and kind of accept the tendencies i have where i seem to really enjoy and take a lot of pleasure and take a lot of satisfaction out of knowing that i'm just better than niggas you know that are just better than niggas you know what i mean that i'm just better than some of the sisters out there better than some of the niggas out there better than some of the flipping even caucasians out there i'm even better than some of the mexican hispanica latin x people out there who are known hard workers they come out of the womb hard workers i think i'm even better than them that's how much better i am than people amazing isn't it who would have thought that who would have thought that and if you're wondering hey casino where does all this crazy you know nauseating almost cringeworthy self-confidence come from where did this suddenly erupt from i get i'll tell you what I just read a flipping really crazy Kanye West article. Whenever I see Kanye West's name, it always fills me with an unbridled sense of self-confidence and I just want to go out and attack the world. But there's also some times when you see Kanye West's name and you're like, oh no, not this headline. So we're obviously going to cover the breaking news that's just appeared on my timeline regarding Kanye West being sued for sexual harassment. I thought this would never happen. I'm not going to lie because he's my goat and he's my hero. And he's one of the only people within culture who doesn't really have any smut on his name when it comes to girls. He's kind of avoided that. He says crazy shit. He's not really a fan of the Hasidic Jews. He's not probably a fan of Jews full stop. He hates his own family, the Kardashians. Um, He has a love-hate relationship with being black um, and everything else in between. He hates Diddy um, and other people in between. And he hates Chris, you know, Chris Jenner and shit. But usually, usually, when it comes to the females, he usually treats them pretty well. And women have only good things to say about him, especially the most attractive ones. And you don't really hear creepy stories about him. And it's always something that you can kind of, you know, stick your flag in the ground and say, see, this is why I'm Kanye a fan, because he's not a creep. But unfortunately, some girl, a former assistant, has put a lawsuit out about him and it's looking kind of dicey. So we're going to cover that and a few other bits and bobs, some fashion stuff, some sports stuff, some football stuff, all those things in between. So strap on in and enjoy the Taz show coming at you live, wherever you may be. <sighs> man what a crazy day so obviously when i record these shows i usually record them offline i don't usually do live streams i like to kind of just you know gather my thoughts take my time but i thought you know i'm not because of this news and because of the severity of the news and how shocking it is i thought why not kind of cover it live so you can get my initial first-hand reaction on this very shocking news concerning one of my goats one of my heroes kanye west who's now being sued by a former employee for sexual harassment to be specific this particular person is as tmz list them they are a former assistant this is an ex-assistant of kanye's who's now suing kanye for sexual harassment first off is a surprise as a big kanye fan one of the things i kind of you know cherish about him is the fact that you don't really hear any smut around his name he's not really connected with anything creepy anything dodgy nothing diddy ish nothing whatever else he seems to be somebody that's obviously aggressively very you know outwardly horny we know that based on the women that he's fancied based on how he just conducts his life and based on what he's told us 
but he doesn't seem to let that horniness seep out into anyone else apart from his missus. I've got a feeling he's into swinging stuff. That's part of my little feeling as just a Kanye fan. I have the feeling Kanye's into maybe some swinging shit. He might be into some cuckold shit, but I think it's within the confines of his relationship or his marriage. I don't think he, I, I wouldn't assumed he'd be the kind of guy that'd be like, you know, trying to rub up on random things, you know, grabbing boobs that aren't his, touching people that aren't, you know, that he he doesn't know and shit and just being a creep and being there. I would never put that on him because he seems to carry himself a little bit more, you know, with a little bit more grace than that. But unfortunately, according to this particular report via TMZ, that doesn't seem to be the case. So let's see what TMZ have to say. And let's see how I try to kind of gauge this whole thing. Now, off the rip, as somebody's mentioned in the chat, off rip, the unfortunate thing about Kanye and this story is that the lady in question, off rip, just from the purely surface level physical observation, she looks exactly like Kanye's type. If you're not seeing the picture, it's a, you know, racially ambiguous Caucasian lady with very big boobs who kind of looks like Kim, who kind of looks like Bianca. Not really, but kind of, you know? If you told me she was Australian, I'd believe you. If you told me she was Italian and from Bologna, I'd believe you. So racially ambiguous. On a good day, she tans and she looks fucking like Sofia Bergara. On another day, she doesn't tan. She looks like some girl from Essex. So that kind of racially ambiguous kind of vibe, but also she's got massive mummy milkers. And you know, Kanye is more of a tits guy than he is a bum guy. Because I only noticed it today, actually, when I saw his picture. I noticed today when I saw his picture, oh shit, Kanye is actually more of a tits guy than a bum guy. You think of Amber Rose, you think of Kim Kardashian, all these people, yes, they've got all big bums, but one of the things that's probably prominent that you remember him from is the massive mummy milkers. Um, you can see I'm kind of stalling, right? You can see I'm stalling. You can see this guy's my hero and I'm finding it hard to scroll down in the flipping article. I'm talking about this woman's looks. I'm talking about her fucking physical attributes and I'm not getting at the heart of the story because I don't want to read it. I'm not going to lie. I don't want to read it. Kind of, I don't want to read it because this guy's my guy and I don't want to read him being, being creepy. I don't want to read it. It's going to break my heart. Whew. Anyway, surface level, this young lady does look like his type. So I'm, tend I'm prone to believe it. If she looked like Lizzo, I wouldn't believe it you know, but because she looks the way she does, I'm prone to believing it, cool, let's continue, so scrolling down on this TMZ article, oh my god, she looks exactly like his type, oh my god, look at these pictures, hopefully I don't get taken down from YouTube or wherever I'm streaming this right from now, but this woman looks exactly like somebody that Kanye would want to cover in some of his coom, so the article says, Kanye's executive personal assistant claims he gave her the boot after sending a vile text. Vile, no, let's repeat that again. Kanye West ex slash personal assistant claims he gave her the boot after sending her vile sexual texts and videos. Oh, for goodness sake, Kanye. Okay. That's already hot. That's already hot because if it's vile sexual texts and videos, most likely there's evidence of these vile texts and videos. And it's probably a way to link and authenticate the number to Kanye. The timelines will match up, blah, blah, blah. So this is like irrefutable, really. If there's hard evidence that he is sending her fucking 4 a.m. texts and 5 a.m. texts of videos and texts, this, you can't dispute this when it's in picture and video format, right? cool but let's try and dispute this because i'm a kanye fanboy so let's try and defend the undefensible <laughs> it continues lauren Pis lauren pisciotta 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 oh my god she's even italian i think right lauren pisciotto pisciotta how do you say that pisciotta 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 Lauren Pisciotta. Pisciotta. I was thinking that's how you saw her name. I, 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 I do apologize if it's not. But Lauren Pisciotto. Pisciotta. Or Pisciotta. 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 Pisciotto. Pisciotta. How have you said her name? Pisciotta. 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 Let's go with Lauren P. Lauren P. says in her lawsuit, she was an OnlyFans model who posted a bunch of bikini and lingerie pics and was super successful making one mil a year. By the way, big up to her and big up to all my fucking OnlyFans girls out there 
now that I know more about the business and what goes on behind the scenes and how much people are making, yo, maximum respect. Especially if you don't mind, you know, the slight reputational damage you might take from getting on OnlyFans and shit. Some of these ladies out here, are they're pulling in some wedge. So I can only imagine how hard it is for dudes out there to date. Like, there's girls out there, like regular, average, everyday girls who are legitimately pulling good money from OnlyFans. And some of them aren't even doing crazy shit. They're not even, like, having sex on there. They're just posting lingerie pictures and pulling in, like, two grand plus a month, five grand plus a month, on top of what they do as a job full-time. So these girls are making, like, easily a hundred grand a year. Easy. So imagine if you're a dude working a regular 30, 30 grand a year job, 40 grand a year job, 50 grand a year job. How do you pull these regular women who are pulling that much amount of money, living on their own in a nice two bed house somewhere with a car in a driveway and shit? Again, it's up to, if, if you don't like that sort of degeneracy, it's not for you, you're Christian, I, know, I, know, I understand. But if you don't mind all that sort of stuff and how people get their money, it kind of really fucks up the dating pool, isn't it? It kind of messes, mixes, messes it all up because you know, these women are super independent, um, super self-sufficient. They don't need you at all. So you have to bring something else to the game, really something else. You can't just come in with just, oh, I've got money. I can fucking make you quit your job. I can retire. You say, bitch, she can retire herself. She makes fucking, you know, five grand a month posting fucking, you know, Victoria's Secret pictures and shit in lingerie. Anyway, continuing. I, I'm, I'm curious to know why she decided to stop doing OnlyFans and work for Kanye, though. Let's see what, what why that is. Kanye hired Lauren in July 2021 after meeting her when he was putting together his fashion line. She says she also collaborated with him and worked with him on free songs on Donda. Fuck off. What did this girl do on Donda? Has this girl got credits on Donda? If she if we search her on Genius, is she on there? What the fuck does she add on Donda? So she's a she's a producer allegedly and also an assistant. And a what's she what is she? A, an executive and a personal assistant. I don't know what that means. What what's an executive assistant? Is that the same thing? anyway continuing a year later she says she came a year later she says he came to her and wanted to give her a year later she says he came to her and wanted her to be godlike and asked her to delete her only fans and promised to pay her one mil a year if she did she says she agreed so kanye doing what kanye does best whenever he's into something full blown he goes full he goes fully hard on it pun intended he splooges all over it, pun intended. He goes ham, pun intended. He decided everyone around him had to be Christian when he's going through his Christian face. You see that already, even there's that clip that goes viral of him chastising that girl that's wearing some Hellstar sweats and shit, right? So this makes sense as well. This lines up with the GA that we know. And we also know he's got money. So we know he would be willing to pay somebody a million a year just to be his assistant because she's got fucking big fat tits. You know what I mean? I could, I could see that being the case. Continuing. Um, Lauren P claims shortly after Kanye began to send her a series of text messages yeah unfortunately the moment you let somebody pay you a million a year and it's not really deserving of your role it kind of feels like a transaction in it right it kind of feels like a transaction unfortunately that's not really you know why should he pay you a million a year just to, it doesn't make I mean like what so already the lines were blurred the moment he did that she probably should have ran for the hills as soon as that happened Shortly thereafter, Kanye began to send her a series of text messages, including one that said, see, my problem is I want to be, hold on, see, my problem is I be wanting to fuck then, hold on, let's continue that again. <laughs> Kanye, I don't want to see Kanye's horny texts. We should never see each other's horny texts ever in the history of the world, but I don't want to see one of my heroes horny texts, especially a 40 plus year old man with like a million kids. It's just, oh my God. Lauren P claimed shortly thereafter Kanye began to send her a series of text messages, including one that said, See, my problem is I be wanting to fuck, but then after I fuck, I want a girl to tell me how hard they've been fucked while I'm fucking them. Then I want her to cheat on me. What? Then I want her to cheat on me. Yo, is Kanye like. Kanye is in full cuck mode, isn't it? Is this gooning or is this cucking? Like, what the fuck is that about? He enjoys when people cheat on him. So he's into that sort of stuff. Like, what do they call that sort of stuff? Um, there's a Reddit for it. Hot wife. There's a Reddit for it. Yeah, there's a hot wife Reddit. So I think he's into that hot wife shit, right? Where it's like, 
oh um sorry babe i'm late from uh, i'm not gonna get i'm not gonna be home on time i've got like a team meeting and then the woman accidentally sends a picture of her like like deep throating some guy oh my god i just went to go and ask dan our next door neighbor for a screwdriver um look at us now and it's them two like hanging off some swing yo yay's into that hot wife shit i would have never guessed bro i honestly thought he was into like swinging i just had a feeling with how he displays Bianca Sensori, with how he was with 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 with, with um, Kim, how he was with Amber, I just assumed he was into like swinging, like you know, we swap we swap chicks and shit. But it looks like he's into like knowing he gets off on knowing that his wife is desired by other people, and also knowing that she's getting fucked by other people. Maybe not being in the room, but knowing that it's happening. <sighs> Yo, oh Kanye, man, Kanye, why? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. This girl's got a slam dunk case, bro. This girl's got a slam dunk case, man. She's gonna take all these easy coins, bro. This girl's got a slam dunk case. She's probably got texts, video, screenshots, actual fucking, you know, dot mov fucking files dot mp4 files she's probably got voice notes she's got everything man there's no way this girl doesn't have it all you don't bring this sort of lawsuit no oh, kanye brother brother first diddy and now kanye really is this what the world's doing to me i feel personally attacked god damn it at least with diddy we, we, we all had a feeling i don't think anybody out there can say they thought kanye was like this don't ever lie I don't want people doing revisionist history now. Oh yeah, I always knew Kanye was like Diddy. No, you didn't. He might be a bit of a cunt, obviously, as a person, but you never thought he did something crazy with girls. There's never been a story. This is a shock to me. <sighs> anyway, it really got vocal after that with more alleged text sent from um, Lauren P that described Ye's sexual fantasies with women, including a lot of explicit language. Hold on. So she was also replying back, it says, it seems like, right? She was also, I guess she was engaging and fine with it for a moment and then she wasn't. Because it says, it really gets vulgar after that with more alleged texts sent from Lauren P that describe Ye's sexual fantasies. Oh, sorry. So she sent them to TMZ, maybe. That's what, I think that's what they mean. Fuck, she wasn't, she wasn't involved, was she? I've always, anyway, I've never really understood. And this is maybe something that I'm just going to say aloud and I'm going to sound like a fucking dork, right? So please bear with me. I'm going to sound like a fucking nerd. I'm going to sound like a lame. I'm going to sound like a choir boy. I know, but please bear with me. I've never understood why some guys out there who think, who, who know girls or who work with girls, especially like this, who are involved in like the adult entertainment industry or who are sex workers. I've never understood why guys think because a woman's involved in that sort of industry that she likes that sort of language like you know like i've never understood why that is a, why that is the case why do guys think that girls who are like sex workers or who, who post these sort of first traps want dick pics want to be sent weird messages want to be told weird graphic things like why do they think that it's fair if you're engaging with somebody who's giving you that kind of sign and then you're going back and forth cool that's all consenting but why do off rip people just think, oh, because you like suck dick for money, you must enjoy random people sending you pictures of their schlong. Like, why would that be the case? You know, it's a strange thing. Like, it really is like, hmm. But anyway, whatever. Let's continue. There's one interesting alleged text that Lauren P claims he sent her that went something like this. This is Kanye, allegedly. Is my dick racist? It is. This fucking dick racist of mine. I'm going to beat this fucking racist dick for being a fucking racist. I'm going to stare at pictures of my white women with black asses and beat the shit out of my racist dick. Beating the shit out of my big black dick. <sighs> Doesn't that sound like doesn't that not even that that, that that only sounds like Kanye? That sounds like a bar Kanye would say in the rap. That sounds like something Kanye would put in fucking on vultures. My dick is racist. My chicks are no no. 
My money is long. My dick is racist. My chicks are, my chick are faceless. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> big guy, <laughs> big guy, he races. We fat and like, like my, my chick's asses are fat like laces. You know what I mean? <laughs> we don't run DMC on those big titties. <laughs> We KKK it. Like, you know, like, I could definitely see him saying something like this in a bar. This definitely sounds like fucking Kanye. Beating the shit out of this big black cock. I'm going to stare at pictures of white women with black asses and beat the shit out of my racist dick. Beating the shit out of his big black cock. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you should be careful who you text, man. Honestly, consenting adults only, um, you know, and just leave it at that. Because once your stuff gets out, when you see it in black and white, everyone's horn texts sound wild. And by the way, I'm going to hypothesize here. I'm going to hypothesize here something that will, people will not ever think of. These sound like MDMA texts. Coming from a fellow horn monster or coming from a reformed horn monster, and coming from a retired party boy, I know what fucking MDMA Texas sound like. This these sound like MDMA Texas. This sound like somebody that's just flipping going wild. You know what I mean? He's been dabbing his finger in that bag. He's been rubbing that shit on his gums. He might be sprinkled that shit in his fucking Chardonnay. And he's fucking firing those Texas off like gada, 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 gada. my big black dick, my big black dick, my big black dick, my big black. I mean, that's what it sounds like. This sounds, this sounds like it. Anyway, let's continue. Not just this, but Lauren P also claims he would. Oh, okay. Cool. You see, you see when it stops to get funny. You see when it stops to get funny when this happens. Oh, God Almighty, Kanye, you sound like Chris D'Elia, bro. What are you doing? Look at the next paragraph. Not just this, but Lauren P claims. Is it Lauren P or Laura P? What's her name again? Is it Lauren P or Laura? Yeah, Lauren P claims he would masturbate during phone conversations with her and ask her if she would he if she could hear and guess what he was doing. And she claims he was fixated on the penis size of her boyfriend. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Lord God, please sanctify me. Cleanse me of this vulgarity. Oh my God, Kanye. What the fuck are you doing, brother? And there's no doubt in my mind that this girl has bona fide 10K HD clear as day proof of this shit. Screenshots, screen recordings. Oh my God god bro he's gonna have to pay this woman some bank and his reputation is gonna suffer in the fucking process how do you defend this what do you gotta say yeah i'm fucking horny because this isn't horny this is this is harassment bro this person works for you they're your employee you're clearly overstepping them especially i've not heard anything so far in these report that gives the in that gives the in that gives the fucking um that gives me the fucking feeling that they were sexually involved in any way, shape or possible or any way, shape or form. And even if they were, that would also be an abuse of power. Like, you know what I mean? If you're the boss, you can't be fucking your employees, especially not your assistant, especially not if you fight, if you fucking hired her off the strength of her being an OnlyFans girl. All that stuff is already weird anyway, right? Surrounding yourself with fucking, you know, with women, with fucking women that you want to fuck is strange anyway. But if you're going to do that whole, like, I don't know, surround yourself, oh, I'm only going to work with women type of thing, you have to go out of your way to also be, like, a safe space guy and not be the person that's kind of coming onto them. I know some guys like to do that to be, like, suave and to appear cool. There is something swaggy about, like, oh, yeah, my whole company, I only hire women, I don't hire dudes. Cool. But then don't try and fuck them. Do you know what I mean? Like, just let them work. <laughs> it's already weird that you're fucking objectifying them in that way. But fair, if they don't mind being objectified, if they don't mind being your big titted assistant that's just there because they're eye candy 
and they're there to maybe disarm potential investors and shit and it's a good fucking vibe at the office and you're into fashion and you want to use them as your muse cool but then just leave them alone <laughs> you know what i mean don't send them texts about how you are wanking talking to them <sighs> god almighty it continues according to the lawsuit there was a slew of text messages and sexual videos and photos that were sent to her including at least two videos of kanye having sex with a model she claims he then promoted her to chief of staff for his various companies at a salary of four million dollars yo kanye is giving these girls birkin bags and he's giving these girls fucking paydays isn't it if you're a white woman with big tits and ambition and you don't mind him sending you some weird messages he's gonna pay he's gonna he's gonna sort you out because i got a feeling that this is also coming about because she probably wasn't paid so if you're gonna sexually arrest again this is weird to say this but i'm sure there are some women out there who probably have a higher threshold for like nonsense in for enduring nonsense and enduring harassment and shit so if they're gonna endure harassment if they're gonna put up with guys being creepy and leering at them at work pay me my fucking money and pay on time but i have a feeling that kanye didn't clear a couple invoices continued sending those messages and she's like bruh i don't even like you sending this stuff i've made it clear and you're not paying me okay cool now you're dead <sighs> um lauren p says in october 2022 she was fired but claims he owed her three million severance which she accepted she claims he never paid She's suing for breach of contract, sexual harassment, wrongful termination, and hostile work environment. You see, I didn't even read the article and I knew it. I knew it. This woman's a fucking pro. She's put up with, you know, looking the way she does. I'm sure she's put up with loads of men saying crazy shit to her, sending her mad messages. She probably knows how to kind of extract money from that situation. Just kill keep it moving, right? But you have to make it somewhat worth her while if that i know that sounds crass and crazy but those kind of people exist we're just you know able just to kind of power through but don't keep being cracking creepy and then not paying me kanye is a wild guy bro i wonder why she even got fired to be fair i wonder what what why he decided to fire her we reached out to kanye's rep so far no word back of course there's no word back what's he gonna say what can he say this sounds fucking this sounds like a slam dunk all these text messages sound like him all these quotes that we've got so far they sound exactly like something kanye would say like you can't not you know you can't argue against that especially like see my problem is i'll be wanting to fuck then after i want a girl to tell me how hard they've been fucked while i'm fucking them then i want her to cheat on me it's like yeah kanye is into what now <sighs> yeah anyways that's a fucking crazy case i think it's a slam shot kanye is in big fucking trouble um really fucking big fucking trouble and um let's see how it develops but this he sounds fucking guilty as fuck bro i'm not gonna lie he sounds fucking guilty as fuck and that woman's gonna get way more than her fucking severance now and his reputation is gonna be sullied especially with all the light on fucking diddy and shit especially with his ongoing beef with diddy man oh man oh man oh man isn't it a shame that that doesn't exist in that fashion design culture art music world for so far we don't have any example of a dude high level who surrounds himself with beautiful women who happens to be straight who isn't a bit of a creep i, I don't know why they don't exist they should exist because i think there's probably a lot of like um there's a lot of strength in that there's obviously a lot of, especially when it comes to the art anyway, surrounding yourself with that kind of energy and also not leering on them. It's probably going to influence and help your art in the first place, whatever you're fucking doing, whatever medium you're in. But for some reason, it doesn't seem to be the case. And I wonder why. I wonder what is it about the scene, the industry that just, you know, it doesn't, it, people just aren't on their best behavior. Bombarded, bro. God damn it. God damn it anyway what can you do what can you do prayers to lauren pisiokota have you pronounce her name pisiotota let's hope that she gets a good conclusion from this and she secures the bag and now everyone knows what turns kanye on he's gonna be so fucking embarrassed so he, as he should be if all that stuff is true 
anyway moving on and let's kind of like you know shake up the fucking temperature and make this a little bit more of a good feeling have you guys seen this this is courtesy of this artist called i think his name is snow day it's, it's spelled s-n-o-w-d-4-y so i think it's called snow day allegedly this song is big in toronto it's called wagwan delilah and for some reason drake jumped on it he's a random dude no one really knows much about him unless you're from toronto i guess he's a local hood star everyone fucking is raving over the tune over there but for some reason drake jumped on it you know i'm not too sure if this is him trying to you know recapture himself after the fucking beef with kendrick if he just actually likes the tune if this kid's gonna be signed to ovo sometime soon i don't know it just drops on soundcloud now so i'm gonna react to it live right now as i'm recording this podcast so let's hear what this song sounds like it's a snow day it's the tune called wagwan delilah featuring drake and it's available now on the soundcloud which is snow day s-n-o-w-d-4-y so that's soundcloud.com s-n-o-w-d-4-y it's the only track on the soundcloud let's check out what this collaboration sounds like <laughs>
Square one don't shine as bright as you. I swear, I swear. Well, that was quite possibly one of the greatest hip hop songs I've ever heard in my entire life. Up there with nothing but a G thing. Up there with Shook Ones, The Message, Run DMC, Sucker MCs, Salt and Pepper Push It, 50 Cent in the Club, Ice T 6 in the Morning, Naughty by Nature, OPP, Eric B and Rakim, you know, that was up there with those type of legends, you know, De La Soul shit. Slick Rick shit, you know, Beastie Boy shit, Wu Tang Clang shit, UGK shit. That was up there with that sort of thing, you know. Public Enemy, Fight the Power. That was up there with Fight the Power. That might have been one of the best things I've ever heard in my entire life. And I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait to put this on my Serato. I can't wait to put this on my iPhone as a locals file because it's not available on streaming platforms just yet. I'm going to put it as a locals file, big up the local file gang, and play this on fucking loop when I'm in the fucking gym doing my overhead presses. You know, when I'm chalking up. I can't wait when I'm pushing weights on a bench press, when I'm fucking getting up doing my fucking deadlift, when I'm doing my fucking back squat, when I'm doing my fucking power cleans, when I'm doing my fucking power cleans. I can't wait. I really can't wait. When I'm doing my Turkish get ups, you know? I can't wait. I can't wait. What an amazing song. Big up Drake, big up everything he touches turning to gold and big up Snow Day for allowing Drake to jump on such an amazing and absolutely stupendous and sparkling tune really. This kind of reminds me of the first time I heard fucking Frank Ocean, you know, when you know when the first time you heard Pyramids and then you heard the second half, you're like, oh my God, this keeps going on. She's trying to hear the pyramids and I, that kind of is what it feels like, right? It feels like the first time you heard Tame Impala, you know, the first time you heard James Blake. The first time you heard a Fortet production, you know? The first time you heard Tank singing, right? The first time you saw a fucking Usher music video. The first time you heard the melodies of Genuine. That's what I heard through there. <sighs> Amazing song. I've got nothing more to say. Amazing song. I'm over you for life. Big up Drake. Big up fucking Drake. Moving on from that amazing song. Moving on from that amazing song. Let's cheer up the mood a little bit and make things a little bit fun once again. There is an interesting, interesting development happening of this channel or this show called Backchat. I'm not too sure if you guys know what it is. Backchat is more of a UK phenomenon. It did kind of cross over to the States, I think, for a little while. But essentially, the whole premise of Backchat is basically a live show, almost like a panel discussion between the genders. You know, the standard thing that black people love to talk about, you know, it's not about fucking, you know, education. It's not about fucking property ownership. It's not about business. It's not about systemic racism. It's not about fucking rebuilding Africa or whatever else or everything else is going on. The one thing that black people love to talk about, regardless of where they're from around the world, is who should pay what on the first date? Do you go raw or not? Do you wear protection? Um, would you would you want to have more than one wife? Would you go out with somebody who had a kid? You know, all those hot button topics, hot button questions that are really at the heart of most communities. Black people fucking love that shit. So there's one particular show called Backchat that is due to come back on our screens very, very soon. That's very, very popular with a big portion of the UK fan base. And they've just released a trailer actually for this show that I'm actually eager to check out and see what the deal is about because i've never watched back chat but i think this might be the great and opportune time for me to react to some back chat content because there's some very spicy people with some very spicy um politically incorrect opinions about the world and this might make for some great content to mix up especially in the random show where i end up talking about brendan or shop all the time sometimes talking about you know some girl you know ranting and raving that it's okay for a guy to lick her out during a period that might be the content that i need to kind of push so this is the trailer courtesy of the channel called trend central it says back chat london is back this is the official 2024 trailer and i think the first episode drops on wednesday i think so but let's play the trailer and let's see what this is all about because i'm curious to see what the vibe is i'm curious to see what the vibe is This is not the show that I signed up for. I didn't know it was going to be mad like this. Oh. It's crazy. 
5th of June. I don't even know how the fuck she's caught cooking in the first place. Why is she, why she named after food? Your mind's in the wrong place. <laughs> if there's no level of understanding, then fuck you, bro. Fuck your graduation. Okay, guys, we're back. Did you miss us? Because we missed you. Well I love it. I love a good UK trailer where you use an American voice to promote very UK specific fucking people and topics. I fucking love it. I love it. I love it. A war between the genders. That's what we need to bring the nation together. A war between the genders. Especially within the same fucking racial community. You fucking love it. When we're meant to be bringing ourselves together, when we're meant to be uplifting each other, especially black women, no, let's tear each other down to our fucking, you know, to the, to the bare essentials in public for the entertainment of strangers like me. I can't wait to watch fucking back chat. Where's your sense of ambition? Where's the part of your brain where it actually work? My mum would even say to me, your bum is as flat as your dad's bum. Wow! Y'all are just done so okay, and I'm done with the Imagine sharing some of this stuff on a public platform, the stuff your mum says to kind of get under your skin, the stuff that gets said in the household in general, just sharing it with the public. I guess it's a one way to kind of deal with your trauma. Them, I swear to God. My mind was telling me, Ross, she could be fucking him. Now all of a sudden, M products, he fucked him. Okay, so what if I was drunk and I don't remember anything? Were well, you drunk? No, 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 I'm asking that question. No, no. I, don't, I don't do what if. Did, were you drunk? I'd be girl, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he looks like he might be my favourite. <laughs> I can't wait to watch this fucking episode. Is it okay to smash a girl when she's drunk? Is it okay to keep continue smashing a girl when she keeps saying no? Is it okay to keep smashing a girl when she's crying? Is it okay to keep smashing a girl when she legitimately looks like she's having a panic attack? Is it okay? Should I continue stroking or should I call for an ambulance? <laughs> I can't wait for some of these absolute nonsense topics. <laughs> Is it gay if I stop fucking when she starts screaming, get off me, get off me? Guys, fellas, is it gay? <laughs> is it gay to rape? <laughs> you are deluded. Like, you are, you are, I think you're just here to just to just wind me the fuck up. Hey, but, hey, cookie, I'm not coming for you. I'm just saying. Even if you're coming for me, it's like, I don't care. Oof. Cookie has eaten all the cookies, isn't it? God damn it. Big up Cookie. Cookie has eaten all the fucking cookies. No amount of contouring, no amount of 3D shading, no amount of Photoshop, no amount of face tune is going to ever conceal the fact that Cookie has never missed a single cookie in her entire life. Maybe some of those jars in the back on that shelf are devoid of cookies because of the one and only Cookie. But she probably spells her name with a K, not with a C which is probably quite interesting in itself. But big up Cookie, at least the hair is laid, you know, whatever else you can say about everything else. But Jesus Christ, Cookie. Cookie by name, Cookie by fucking nature, isn't it? Fucking hell, lady. Fucking hell. Fucking hell. But, she, but the funny thing about Cookie, especially in England, Cookie's probably got more bodies than fucking Chris Brown. That's the actual funny thing about, you know, people that look like this in London or in England for the most part. She's probably got more bodies than fucking Chris Brown. I bet you. Everybody here has literally been to talk about you're a hoe, you're a hoe. I'm representing. We have. Oh, hello. Hello there. Hello, Auntie. What's your name? Hello, Auntie. What's your name? Hmm. Eh? You could pass a fucking central line through those fucking nostrils, right? You could pass a fucking, you know, a double decker bus through those fucking nostrils, but fucking hell, Auntie. Hello. Have to use our intellect and think about mm. this is a debate we are representing different demographics of society. You disrespected my name. Oh, another one, another one. There's a couple of uh, there's a couple fucking there's a there's a couple pounded yams. I wouldn't mind fucking pounding. Not gonna lie, man. If I wasn't married, there's a couple fucking pounded yams I wouldn't mind dipping my fingers into. And by dipping my things into, I mean fucking fingering. Different demographics of society. You disrespected my name. You disrespected your name. How did you disrespect your name? Transsexual aim. Paying me enough to be doing bodyguard between these babes right now. That's not my child. Imagine trying to get in between Cookie and somebody else. Yo, Cookie's gonna slump. That's the thing as well. Unlike unlike American women, UK women, especially if they're big, they can actually fight. I think American women have this tendency of like, they're just big for nothing. They maybe have good, good lip. They, have, they probably have good insults because they're used to being cussed out. But UK girls, if she's big, she can definitely fight. Like they can fight for real. Like not even pulling hair, like actual punching. Do you know what I mean? Like fucking striking, like Islam and shit. Do you know what I mean? Like fucking for real, for real. So get in front of, or get in between cooking her enemy and she's going to take your fucking head off. She might also bite your hand. 
you know, especially if it looks like a cookie, but she might take your head off. If I want to make time for my boyfriend, I make time well, for my boyfriend. That's not my baby. I don't care. That's not my baby. You don't care. If I wanted a baby, if I wanted my life to be on pause. To be fair, cookie m may look like the size of a fucking multi pack of Iceland cookies, but she's got a face on her, isn't it? Her face card's not declining. That's one thing you have to do. If you're a big girl, you have to make sure the face is fucking the grill. The fucking face card is never fucking declining. That thing is always tap, 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 green, 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 approved, 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 approved. And her face is, you know, let's be real. Cookie face wise, she's clearing some of these girls in this show. I would have had a kid. I would have pushed the kid out my vagina. So you, Kim Richards, don't play with me. You really don't want to hear anything. Look at this guy. The reason you don't want to hear anything, right? Oh, bad boy, huh? The reason man don't want to hear anything. I got a gun in my shank. The shank in my gun, huh? I made this guy looks like he's either gonna sell you crypto. He's gonna try to get you to come to his church, or or. He's got some fucking agency he wants you to sign up to. Creative agency, you get me? I got man got studios in like South and that. You get me? I'm just trying to inspire the man them to do certain bits and bobs. You feel me? Yeah. Studios are kind of cheap still. <laughs> but there's definitely a scam involved and he's always profiting. He's the kind of guy on Snapchat like, bro, anyone need drops? Get at me, innit? It's another day, man. You know what I mean? Don't let the fucking government put you down, innit? Tory what? Labour who? Make your own fucking way forward. <laughs> That's why you keep teacher, talking. Teacher, teacher, land your point. You don't, no, you don't want to listen. Well, your students, land your point. Brains. This is some chicken head conversation. Ooh. <laughs> I wish I could get away with talking to women like that, man. I wish I had like a fade like that. I wish I had like, you know, that kind of aggression, that kind of fucking intimidation, that kind of body, that kind of fucking presence to just talk to girls like, you're some chicken heads, man. You got some chicken heads. I always have to be meek and be like, excuse me, can I touch one of your boobs? You know what I mean? I'm one of those type of dudes. Excuse me, can I touch your face, please? You know, I'm Kanye with the Texas. Um, pardon me, madam, can I put my hand on your bum? <laughs> you know, it's because, man, turn around, man. Let me see that back off, man. Oh, man, you're a bird. <laughs> he said that stuff just to make them girls feel good. And all them girls just, eh, yeah, I can't, yeah, he's a godsend. Eh. I like a natural baby, but if Oof. Yeah, there's a couple there's a couple babes in this, isn't it? Not gonna lie. That one especially. She's she's the shining star so far. The one that left here. This like this young lady also, you know. I, I wouldn't say no if she tried to give me a meat pie. And by meat pie I mean fucking schlong. And by schlong I mean penis. But yeah, um there's a couple babes in this. I'm not gonna I, I, oof, this outfit is. Yo, wearing a bra top under a varsity jacket is fucking insane. Wearing a fucking bikini top under a varsity jacket and just letting your fucking nipples chafe under all that fucking you know lining is insane as a woman letting your fucking bare tatas chafe underneath that fucking lining is ridiculous girl get yourself together what are you doing bro if you don't have no back and you want to back go buy that you got what i'm saying don't expect me to buy it though when you go to an interview what do you do Oh, look at those eyes. When you go to an interview, what do you do? Yo, look at those eyes. That guy's definitely asked a few girls, where's my hug at? This one looks like a where's my hug at? I don't know. I just looked at this guy and I could tell. Where's my hug at? Man, what are you playing hard to get, man? What's wrong with you, man? You always, you always say no, like you don't want it. Like, you want it, man. Just just let man stick it in one time, innit? Come on, man. You know, like a microwave thing, just like couple minutes and ting, ding i'll be out in it like come on man what, what are you being long for you ain't screaming and crying like you don't want this thing like come on man last time you gave me a hug and you hold me for like 2.2 seconds what's that mean exactly man fuck me in it <laughs> natural babe but if you don't have no back and you want to back go buy that you got what i'm saying don't expect me to buy it though when you go to it look at that 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 guy definitely asked a couple times where's my hug at for sure Fucking hell. Fucking hell. He's the one that's be he's the one that you, you meet in startups. There's always one boy from ends from startups you meet who's just fucking pursuing all the fucking ladies in the fucking room in the fucking office. The mums, the the fucking front of the house, the HRs. He's all over them, do you know what I mean? Always in their slacks, sending fucking emojis. Hey, what's up? What's going on? Are you alright? Fucking hell. Interview, what do you do? Put on your Sunday best. You don't go in there in your track suits, do you? You go there in a nice suit, tie, and you present and you deceive. Oh. You think you're bad? You think you're bad? 
Oh yes, this is what this is probably the pinnacle of UK machismo manhood battle. Who will win? The consummate gym boy, who usually is a reformed dork. Maybe he grew up being a bit skinny. He grew up being bullied a little bit. And then you get into your teenage years and you're like, you know what? Let me activate these black jeans. Let me just activate these black jeans one time with a couple dumbbell presses. And then you come out fucking, fucking swole as fuck, right? I know loads of boys like that that grew up with me just went, man, fuck all this getting bullied thing, man. Let me just couple, let me do a couple fucking, you know, close grip fucking bench presses and boom, they've got fucking bigger tits than fucking Jordan, right? They're coming out and say, like, all right, cool. What do you want? So you got that guy, right? who maybe he's now become a man in like his early 20s, mid 20s, now facing up against the dude that's always been the cool guy, in nice always suit, been the bad guy present, around the area. Who Plus, wins? Who wins? I want to know who wins. You think you're bad? Who you wins you're between those two guys? Who wins between those two guys? Who wins between the road man and the gym man? Because I will give you a, a sneak peek. Both of them can't fight. Both of them get away with bullying weaker people like myself, puny little five foot four, scrawny, geeky, dorky, point dexery guys like myself. They get away bullying us because of their bravado, road man, because of their size, gym boy and PT. But they actually can't fight. So I'm wondering who actually wins in a fight between a road man, drug dealer, crypto scammer, and gym boy, PT part-time only fans um fucking creator who actually wins who actually wins in a fight because none of them can throw a straight punch to save their life none of them can throw a hook none of them can get anyone into a fucking submission none of them can throw into a kick none of them can fucking defend a takedown none of them can wrestle none of them could do anything apart from what they fucking saw on power rangers when they were fucking young or some shit you're bad. You think you're bad. You're Nobody's landing a punch. Everyone's just doing battle of aggression. I'm in the middle, just getting thrown about like some. In that instance, you just have to go for the fucking Tyson Fury Senior headbutt. You have to go for the headbutt straight, especially that guy. He's got a fucking fade. You know, he's got his hair. He's you know, just go for the straight headbutt and just set pace. Bap, set pace. The ragdoll, bro. I know bad man in it. Like so, if it's that kind of timing, let me know in it. And oh, then... that voice. Oh, that voice, gym boy. Oh, that voice doesn't doesn't intimidate much, does it? I know fucking bad man, innit? Like, obviously, I've had bad man all over me, bruv. You know, get me. Man's a part-time content creator on OnlyFans. I know bad man. I'm inside of bad man. They're inside of me. I feel a bad man cooming in me, and I know I'll go on, innit? I know when a bad man is about to bust. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> PT guy doesn't sound intimidating. I'm not gonna lie. And like I can make the right arrangement. You're just a little chatty pat in the back. Like you're you're the backup dancer Ooh. right now. Like you're I like that too, you know. Baby mamas are easy. I'm sorry. Not not gonna lie. There's nothing. There's nothing that I'm kind of like academics in this regard. There's nothing that will make a guy like me weaker than these more than a fucking mouthy hood rat. Man, what are you saying about just fucking butt? She's like a fucking human chihuahua. You know. Like, there's nothing that fucking makes men more weaker than these than a human chihuahua. Basically, a fucking hood rat. Look at the fucking gel curls here, the earrings and shit, the hair pulled back, the voice, the fucking arms everywhere. Oh, ho, ho. She, she might get you murdered, <laughs> right? She might get you set up. You might end up in prison. You might end up with a kid that you don't want. <laughs> she might fucking take your DLs and get a council house, but it's gonna be fucking fun. It's gonna be fucking fun. All right, it's gonna be fucking fun. In the back, like you're you're the backup dancer right now. Like you're actually a backup dancer. Baby mamas are easy. I'm sorry, they are. Baby mamas and and, and fat bitches, or fat girls. Oh, he said fat bitches. Look at him, hard boy. Fifth fifth of June, eight p.m. Okay, I'll be there. We will be there. I'll be there anyway, regardless. Um, I'm sure some of you guys don't care, but I want to fucking mix things up, especially on a random show, and just into, you know, just fucking make things a bit fun and loose again. And what better way to make it fun and loose than to enter into some pure degeneracy that brings out my people and makes us all look like heathens and monsters and layabouts and just unscrupulous, you know, people that we are. I fucking love it. I fucking love it. 
talking about loving and on the subject of creepiness and shit i saw this topic and i was thinking to myself like i wonder actually this actually explained to me in some respect why because i've always thought to myself like why do some girls especially like to have like gay best friends like what is it about women that particularly like to have gay best friends in the first place and now i think i've finally got my answer due to this really funny story courtesy of buzzfeed Chloe Savengi recalled awkwardly learning that Tom Hollander has a wife and kids after mistakenly treating him like a gay best friend and pushing up against him. So, this is Chloe Savengi. You know her. She's fucking influential. She's the fucking best. I know her mainly from kids, but she's obviously an actor and actress, an all around fucking fashionista and a muse and a socialite in her own fucking right. Anyway, she said as follows, Chloe Savengi recorded an awkward mix-up with one of her co-stars. As you may know, Chloe just appeared on FX's feud, Capote v. The Swans, which is based on the true story of Truman Capote and his decade-long spanning um, dispute with a group of NYC socialists known as The Swans. Alongside the likes of Demi Moore and Naomi Watts, Chloe starred as Lucy Douglas C. 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 guest with the Capote was portrayed by Tom Hol Hollander. Before Chloe worked closely with Tom on Feud, she'd been a fan of his acting after watching him on the second season of The White Lotus. On the critically acclaimed show, Tom starred as a gay criminal named Quentin who befriended Jennifer College character Tanya and malicious, with malicious intentions and because his performance was so good, Chloe recently told Variety that she mistakenly assumed he was gay in real life. I was like, he was my gay best friend or my new gay best friend, until I realized that he had a wife and kids. And I think, in general, what I've realized from this gay best friend thing is it just allows women the ability to have a male friend that doesn't want to fuck them. Because it probably must be quite exhausting to know somebody, especially a dude that you actually like and you actually like spending time with and chilling with and talking to and, you know, just hanging out with. But then also knowing in the back of your mind, if you was to roll over and show him your cheeks, he's gonna slide that shit in you know what i mean if you was to fucking you know get your fucking mummy milkers are out he's gonna fucking suck on those bad boys that's gotta be a little bit of a grating thing to have in the back of your head as a girl like fucking hell man i can never you know really go you know to the next level with this dude because if i do on the friendship thing he's gonna think i want to fucking marry him so the gay best friend is the best of both worlds you get the ability to have a man as a friend and you also know deep down this person has no intention, no desire at all to fuck you. That must be so, so nice. But the funny thing is, it doesn't work on the flip side. I bet you. I bet you there's not a lot of lesbian women who have straight male best friends. I bet they don't exist because for some reason, again, guys, I don't know what it is about some dudes out there that exist. And I, I'm not in that group because I've already said before, I'm one of those freaks that don't really get much out of lesbian porn i know some dudes love that shit but it does absolutely nothing for me um but there's some dudes who have this fantasy of like turning a, a gay woman straight or something right so you can imagine most dudes who have lesbian friends secretly are plotting like yeah you're lesbian for now but once i get a hold of you right right once once, once i get a hold of you right like they, they, they always have that fucking weird self-confidence which is really bizarre to be fair because it's like every guy walks around thinking they're fucking superman and shit but it doesn't work the other way around girls can have gay best friends but i don't think guys can because you know people watch too much pornhub it continues um under the impression that he was gay chloe admitted that she'd perhaps been a little bit more tactile with tom than she might have been had she known otherwise <laughs> which is fucking hilarious right because for some reason i don't i would say for some reason but it makes sense right why you'd be a little bit more you know touchy-feely you might rub up on somebody be like oh my god did you see that twerk and then demonstrate it on him and you know under the you know guys that you know he's not going to get a boner but then when you do feel it you're like oh oh um continues Despite Chloe's concerns about what he might have thought, Tom told the outlet he wasn't at all phased by her friendliness. Um, he says, I didn't feel like she was flirting with me, he said. One of the wonderful things about portraying a gay man on feud, relationship with ladies in the cast benefited. So that's nice to hear, right? That's a good thing to hear from him, to be fair. He didn't feel like, he didn't feel odd. She didn't feel odd. If anything, she said she kind of just realized by herself. She didn't realize it because he tried to fucking stick his tongue down her throat. She just realized it on her own and she came to a conclusion and everything's fucking cool. No problem whatsoever. Um, 
having played several different gay roles throughout his career tom addressed his own sexuality during a recent interview with vanity fair saying for some reason who i am as a person allows me to be present as gay i have been asked to play several gay characters over the years people keep asking me to do it because apparently when i play the characters it's believable my own sexuality is sufficiently liberal to have encompassed many different experiences which um, are not anyone's business he said i've not lived that difficulty um i've not had i've not had to live the shadows and i've been under threat of going to jail expressing that my sexuality I've, I've got to be honest like i've never really had a desire to act it's not really something that's ever kind of ever crossed my mind but i do think as an actor a really interesting way to actually test yourself is to actually do that sort of shit like if you're a straight dude actually try and portray somebody gay and be somewhat believable because there's so much of that character that you're going to have to, you know, um, embody, especially if the lifestyle you don't live or something that you're not aware of, that you're going to have to do so much research, so much learning, just so much work to kind of make that work. And if you do, you are a high level actor, but it's probably one of those things that most guys probably find hard to do when they're not gay. Do you know what I mean? It's probably one of those things that's a hard thing to kind of get across or to kind of get over. But I'd imagine it's probably a lot easier if you're like a proper theatre kid. If you've really been committed to the arts and, you know, putting on the best show possible and you've actually covered a breadth of characters, you've played everything from like a fucking cupboard to a car to a, you know, a person of a different gender, then I think you could probably do the whole gay thing. But I think if you're just a regular hot guy actor, it's probably a lot harder. But if you probably come from the whole performing arts type of thing, it's probably a lot easier to do. I'd imagine you probably got that switch to kind of just start performing and do whatever needs to be done. Um, but yeah, I can I can only <laughs> I can only imagine how embarrassed Chloe Sevengi must have been when she heard that to be the fact. I can only fucking imagine. I can only fucking imagine.